so basically we will be starting our classes with the anatomical consideration so what do you understand but the term periodontics because like first the main thing is you should understand the uh, subject by its terminology i believe in gingiva gingiva is which surrounds the which surrounds the tooth structure like a collar like a band i think everybody know that one clinically also you have seen many thing okay before i start something uh, clinically we'll start like gingiva is something which is covered to the tooth structure at the level of this is cemento enamel junction okay here something about 2 mm it will be something in a normal individual the gingiva will be above the cj around 2 mm above the cj okay and before we go start like uh, what do you understand by the term uh, periodontal sulcus or uh, gingival sulcus is this is something the gingiva the cj is uh, the gingiva is always attached at the level of the cemento enamel junction something like this okay this is a normal finding cj the normal attachment so always the gingival sulcus in a healthy individual it will be around 1 to 2 mm the sulcus will be there this is a gingival sulcus okay clear and uh, coming to the whenever there is a gingival like how do you measure the uh, gingival sulcus or the periodontal uh, pocket is for example because of the periodont uh, periodontal disease there will be a gingival disease like something periodontal pocket has been taken place like periodontal pocket is measured from the marginal gingiva this is a marginal gingiva to the base of the sulcus okay this is a this is your periodontal probing depth or periodontal pocket what do you call okay and coming to the there is one more terminology called as a clinical attachment level or clinical attachment loss both are equivalently same so always whenever there is a gingival recession or the or uh, uh, pseudo pocket or something is there the clinical attachment level is taken into the reference one reference point is taken that is a cej is taken as a reference point from the cj to the base of the sulcus this is a clinical attachment loss okay we will go in depth somewhat okay so for example there is gingival recession uh, and also the pocket formation so whenever you measure a periodontal pocket this is a marginal gingiva and this is a base this is a pocket and the clinical attachment level is from here till the this is a clinical attachment loss or level okay loss or level both can be considered okay so like the amount of the gingival recession how do you calculate so amount of the gingival recession is something uh, like uh, clinical attachment level there are again the two types of the recession like one is visible one is hidden recession or we can say the total recession one is total recession visible recession and hidden recession okay hidden means which is hide inside okay so from marginal gingiva from marginal gingiva to the base of sulcus is a hidden recession okay something visible recession is a from the marginal gingiva to the cement enamel junction is a visible recession the total amount of the recession is from the cement enamel junction to the base of the sulcus is a your total amount of the gingival recession okay chalo we'll go to the subject now any doubts in basics one more thing about this okay cover out leda next is like you want more of explanation or more of uh, mcqs if you understand this you can solve the mcqs easily it's all tricky just like mathematics if you understand this subject na like you can solve easily it's very easy huh? next is i was talking about the gingival fibers gingival fibers are four in numbers periodontal ligament fibers are six in number so gingival you never ever confuse with the gingival fibers 
and periodontal ligament fibers which are always uh, confusing okay this is the tooth structure anything below the cement enamel junction is a periodontal ligament fibers okay this is periodontal ligament fiber and the part which is encircle the tooth structure which hold the gingival to the collar like band is known as a gingival fibers they are in four in numbers depending on the uh, origin of the fibers they are classified into the fiber which is origin from the alveolar crush fiber it is known as alveolar crush group okay alveolar crushed group fibers and the uh, fibers which are origin from the uh, tooth that is cementum dento gingival fibers these are the dento gingival fibers okay the fibers which are common to the periodontal ligament as well as the gingival fibers are transeptal group of the fibers which run from the cj tooth of the one tooth to the other adjacent tooth this is a transeptal fibers transeptal fibers and the last but the not, not the least that's a cervical fibers which encircle the tooth structure which cannot be shown diagrammatically like dot 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 which encircle the tooth structure these are the four periodontal gingival fibers so like don't confuse with the this uh, periodontal ligament fibers okay so next is a periodontal ligament periodontal ligament fibers so the transeptal fibers these are the first fibers which run parallel to the long axis of the tooth like they uh, they origin from the cj of the one tooth to the adjacent tooth so this is a transeptal fiber this is a first group of the fibers second is alveolar crust of the fibers has the same uh, gingival fibers we have the alveolar crust fibers and third is horizontal fibers and fourth is oblique group of the fibers and the fourth is apical apical group of the fibers and one more is interdental area there will be interseptal fibers okay so one by one we'll be dealing with the all other things coming to the anatomical consideration so normal consistency of the gingiva is firm and always resilient okay whenever there is a inflammation or a edema or something is there this firmness goes to edema in consistency and the uh, something fibrosis take place it goes to the leathery in consistency okay that always the answer is firm the leathery is wrong because whenever there is a fibrosis or anything goes wrong then it goes to the fibrosis okay soft and soft and hard the soft is whenever there is a edema it goes to soft okay so this is how you can see the consistency it is a firm and resilient in consistency and the stippling is a normal finding of the all the gingiva and the papilla is always uh, located and stippling will be seen in the middle of middle portion of the interdental area not in the marginal gingiva that you have to make a note because the uh, attached gingiva is always stippled and the marginal gingiva is not uh, marginal gingiva is not stippled okay this part is not stippled so this may be the one of the mcq for you like the marginal gingiva is never stippled okay the only the central portion of the interdental gingiva is stippled and the attached gingiva is stippled okay the consistency of the gingiva is firm and resilient it is due to the collagenous nature and uh, continuity of the mucoperiosteum and the alveolar bone what happen basically is why there is a stippling of the gingiva uh, uh, seen in the seen in this attached gingiva and other portion is so the basically there are two layers okay so this is the outer outer layer and inner layer so lamina propria the the, the something the gingiva is attached like this so whenever there is a depression whenever there is a pull whenever there is a pull there will be there will be stippling so whenever there is a abnormality there is a inflammation of the uh, inflammation of the gingiva take place there will be fluid accumulation or edema take that take place that is the main reason the stippling is not seen at that particular location got the point stippling ke bare mein okay which are the following statement are true the marginal gingiva is stippled yes or no no attached gingiva is stippled yeah exactly the the attached gingiva is always stippled how do you measure the attached gingiva now the coming to the point what is the attached gingiva so this is a tooth structure and this is how the gingiva goes up and this is how it comes down okay the attached gingiva is firmly attached to the underlying underlying the alveolar bone so this is a free gingiva 
and this is a free gingival groove free gingival groove from the the free gingival groove always be located at the location where the uh, base of the sulcus is located okay hmm? and from free gingival groove till the mucogingival junction this portion is attached gingiva why the attached gingiva is very important it gives a like whenever you brush or whenever the masticatory forces it take up the, all the masticatory forces and all other things so that it acts as a something which observes all the forces and all those things that, that, that is the main importance of the attached gingiva okay and uh, the importance of the free gingival groove is where this is the location where the gingival fibers they encircle the tooth structure and they have a band like structure that is the main thing where the uh, basal sulcus also starts one thing and uh, free gingival all the from here there will be all other the gingival fibers will be there okay and from here like you will be having all other uh, periodontal ligament fibers in the base so stippling is seen in the attached gingiva and the central core of the interdental papilla uh, as i told you the, this is the interdental papilla the stippling is only seen in the middle here the marginal gingiva is not stippled this is one of the very very important bit for your uh, mcqs okay and the stippling is a form of the adequate specialization all you can just go through it uh, later on stippling is a feature of the healthy gingiva loss of the stippling is a reversible and is a common sign of the gingival disease so one more question that you can ask the stippling is seen on only which area like marginal gingiva attached gingiva alveolar mucosa or all of the above they can ask you the some portion like this then you have to select the attached gingiva attached gingiva and the middle portion of the interdental papilla middle portion of the interdental papilla is stippled that's it okay so whenever there is the inflammation there is a stippling will be lost because of the inflammation and all those things okay whenever the absence of the stippling means there is a uh, absence of the gingiva in children's gingiva one more important point of the like we will discuss that one gingiva in children's is a more keratinized more stippled more keratinized less stippled less keratinized uh, more stippled less keratinized less stippled what do I, what may be the answer sorry so the gingiva always in the children's are less keratinized and less stippled because the the stippling or the stippling starts at the age of more than 5 years say 3 years to 5 years but usually the 5 years is ideal whenever the option give 3 years to 5 years they go for a 5 years it starts at the 5 years and it goes till the year of uh, 50 to 55 years then uh, below 5 years there is no stippling and after 55 years there won't be any stippling okay so always gingiva in children is uh, less keratinized and uh, less stippled okay the answer is uh, d okay in children the attached gingiva appears less dense and uh, render the same thing all the keratinized layer is a thin in the children's less keratinization less uh, less stippled and uh, more of the prone to the all the infection and other things the main thing is the mucosa the mucosa on the outer surface of the gingiva is always very thin in consistency so that is the main reason it is less stippled and less this one okay so the usually they appears at the age of 3 to 5 years but uh, I say anything above 5 years they, the stippling starts at the age of the 5 years okay the two unique characteristics of the attached gingiva in children are the interdental clefts and the retrocuspid papilla okay we will discuss these two things interdental clefts and the retrocuspid papilla so whatever the, the interdental caspilla whenever the two, two teeth in the children especially in the deciduous tooth what happens the, there will be a gap between the two adjacent teeth that is the main thing main uh, importance of the uh, children actually that is the primary dentition so when the gingiva in the two interdental area especially in the cuspid and the first molar area primary cuspid and first molar area there will be a small uh, striation like here that is B is you know, this striation this is known as the interdental cleft interdental cleft okay and retrocuspid papilla retrocuspid there is a one retrocuspid papilla I will just show you so this is the retrocuspid papilla you can see here the, this is a one is the uh, mostly seen on the lingual side of the canine and the first premolar on the primary dentition so these are the two unique characteristics of the gingiva in the children's so one is retrocuspid papilla a small line in the cuspid and the premolar area okay uh, got the point a, a small line depression like thing in the 
canine and the premolar area retrocuspid papilla and is the next is uh, 